What a beautiful morning. It's all foggy here this morning. This makes everything super damp. The water is condensing on everything and I wonder at times if you need rain when you have this high of humidity. The fog is not very high. Look at this beautiful sunrise as we ascend above the haze. Joel worked real hard this afternoon cleaning all this area out. That way the tractor can drive around without going through the RV shelter. What we're going to do is continue on where we did and come out 10 feet this way. And that will be the awning for the whole building. And we left, I hope, enough room that we can drive past here with the tractor or a side by a side by side. Joel put his tent underneath here. Well, we are busy once again. Joel and I are ready to start the awning. This actually came before most of the previous video where we charred the wood of the RV shelter. Check that one if you haven't. We have had carpenter bees digging into the purlins at the top of the building. And we posted a short of charring the wood and we have had over 50,000 views in less than a week. Thanks for helping us share that technique with others. And speaking of that, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. The first thing Joel and I did was to measure. I don't know about you, but this is not that easy. Squaring up the building you think would be simple. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But in reality, it's rather difficult. Just because you can measure 40 by 10 doesn't mean it comes out right when you are on the ground. The biggest challenge in this project, besides pouring the concrete, is literally getting the diagonal measurements to match. No sweat though, we got it. Okay. Right, take this, and every eight foot, Put a dot underneath the yellow line without getting it on the tape. If you ever get to visit us down here, which someday I hope you will, we will have miles of great trails that will take you to the Cliffs of Insanity or maybe Copperhead Trail, perhaps even the old Moonshine Cabin. We'll also have a great list of places to visit that's off the property too, like Pine Mountain, Cumberland Gap, Sweetie's Ice Cream. Eagle Falls, and so much more. Okay, we should be good, right? Can we see those marks? The next step is to paint the ground where we are going to punch holes. The 12 inch auger is hot and ready to go. And our big orange crosses are the targets okay. to hit with the auger. I think we can see those. That's where we're gonna start digging tomorrow. Joel has also cut the sauna tubes after church on Sunday. We measured those from the ground to the string and got our length for each one. I have to pull forward when drilling in the ground or it doesn't quite go straight. Since the ground is dry, it's not filling up with water. I'm gonna drill them all at once. I was going to fill each one with concrete as I did, because yeah. the other ones were filling them last time, but they're not this time. The water tamper dropped this little bit. I grabbed the shovel, pulled the dirt away. Has Jerison contacted you at all? Uh, 
not today. Okay. I just don't want the dirt falling back in the hole. Hopefully we'll be able to see our lines once we finish the dirt off. Once we are done with the post hole digger for a certain hole, we will then use the post to pound and compress any soil that was loosened during the digging process. Altogether, we put in six piers that took care of the entire part of this building. Once the holes were finished, I began to cut the rebar to give the concrete strength. We are ready to hit the ground running. Did you notice we also have the concrete bag stacked beside each hole? That makes it a lot easier to know that we have the right amount. We go through five to six bags per hole. My brother Adam loaned me his cement mixer once again, and that was handy. I sure appreciate it. The concrete mixing process is certainly the most arduous, as you really have to put in a lot of energy to get this done. You also have to be vigilant to keep the mixture about the same for each one. Every hole took numerous buckets and I couldn't fill them up completely because it was just too heavy. Only a little bit over half is all the bucket would hold or that I could carry.
Once the hole was full of concrete, the sauna tube was put in place and filled. We would then insert the wet set bracket. This is the bracket that the post will attach to when we are putting up the building soon. They work very well and the post is very stable once it's all screwed and bolted in. There's several operations that we have to do all at once. And that is, we have to make sure that the center of this is at 96 inches from the corner of that. And we have to make sure it's level. Hold this on the corner down there. But don't let it pull. Don't let it move that one in case it's still wet, which it is. Okay, are you on the corner? Mm -hmm. Crap, about an inch and a half. <laughs> okay, you on the corner? Yeah. Okay, we moved about a half an inch. You wouldn't think that a post that is held on by only six to eight inches at the bottom would be strong enough, but it is. It still needs supported though. While we are doing the concrete and setting the bracket, we are making sure that it's all level at the right distance to the next poles to the left and to the right and at the correct height. Then we would use the trowel to smooth and level the tops for the finished look. We ended up getting these done all in one day and I was happy about that. Next, we'll work on setting up this part of the structure. Hope to see you again soon. Take care and God bless.